Jason, you do anything fun over the bye weekend? Went home, spent uh, spent the weekend in Idaho with my family. It's a good time. Are you feeling physically and are you pretty much ready to go? Yeah, I feel I feel really good. This is the best I've felt in a long time. So I'm I'm healthy. I've recovered. Uh, my my body feels really good. JD, without, how how big of an impact do you think that's going to have on the offense? Uh, the, the offense, not so much, I don't think. I mean, JJD's a, a big component of uh, that slot receiver guy, and, um, and and he plays that really well. But uh, we have a lot of different packages that we can resort to. Um, obviously, it's going to hurt to to miss him and or to not have him. He's he's one of our captains, voted on by the team, and you know, anytime you lose somebody like that, it's going to hurt. But uh, we've made a few shifts and we've made a few adjustments and uh, we'll, we'll be ready to go and, and hopefully we can get J.D. back within the next couple weeks. Can you guys do much self-scouting over the when you have a little time over the bye week? Yeah. And if so, what kind of maybe stuck out as things you need to improve on? Um, I, I didn't really do a whole lot of self-scouting. Uh, we watched film. We did a lot of uh, breakdown from our Boise State game. We saw areas that we, we can get better on. Um, but other than that, uh, we've been watching Wisconsin, you know, uh, focusing on what we can do to go into a hostile environment and get a win there. So um, uh, we just need to continue to execute at a high level. And, um, you know, we made a few arrangements as far as having JD out and having a bye week to do that has been really helpful. What have you noticed in terms of how defenses are playing you specifically over the last maybe month and a half that, that was different from you know, five games ago? Mm -hmm. um, I, I feel like uh, a lot of it's pretty similar. Uh, we, we've been getting a lot of man looks, um, and they'll, they'll man somebody up and make sure they have somebody to play what we call as a spill player, but basically what it means is somebody to cover me if I pull and run. So we continue to see that. But um, now what we're running into is, is they don't really know what to do to stop our guys on the outside because they're 6'4", they're 6'5", they're and Mitch is 6'6". Six, six. So um, they're not easy to defend. And so they try to play off, and then we throw underneath routes, and then, then they come and press, and then we throw over the top. So uh, that, that's kind of the battle that we've seen so far. And um, basically it just depends on the personnel that we're playing and, and how they try to stop us. Pretty remarkably, you get to take the program east, you get to take it south, you know, you take it to the Midwest. What kind of uh, opportunities come with going to a place like Madison? Uh, well, one, the, being independent has, has given us a lot of opportunity, as you mentioned, to, to travel and see a lot of different venues and, and be in different environments. Going to, to Wisconsin and playing there uh, gives us a great opportunity to make noise on the national level. Uh, they're ranked in the top 25. Uh, they've they're been a, a known program throughout the country and it will give us an opportunity to go into a hostile environment and, and show that we can do or show what we can do against a very uh, very good opponent. In the space of about a month, the way you kind of perceived by BYU fans and others almost flip flopped. Is that really gratifying to you? How do you kind of uh, sum that up? Uh, uh, I mean, look, it, it is what it is, and. Uh, that, that can change just as quickly as it changed before. So if I uh, based how I felt or how I played on, on the fans and the media or what you guys said about me, then it, it would be a constant roller coaster. And, uh, you know, I, I don't worry about that. Uh, I worry about becoming my best self and uh, controlling the things that I control. You know, I, I, I can't control what you guys say. So. Did you watch any of the Iowa game from Wisconsin? I watched about the first quarter, yeah, and then I've watched them since. Odd to see a slower offense. They don't want to run as many mm -hmm. plays as a lot mm -hmm. of teams, including yourself. Yeah, uh, yeah, it, it is a little strange, but we've been in that situation before. You know, Georgia Tech runs the ball a lot, and uh, we, we saw us not run a lot of plays against them, and so we've been in a situation similar to it. So I think it'll be important for us to go out and get to a fast start. Uh, hopefully, we can get an early lead and uh, it takes them out of their game plan. Casey, you mentioned the outside receivers having some, some success, mm -hmm. but there's been a group that's been having quite a big success, and that's just boys who stayed off the tight ends. Yeah. It seems like there's, the offense is becoming more well-rounded in, in, just not just in one or two areas, but in, in a more complete sense. Talk about the pro progression overall and how that's going forward. Yeah, well, I, I think anytime you, you become one-dimensional, you know, you're easy to stop, and that's what we've been trying to work for this whole season, and we, we've kind of seen a progression of that. and. It's kind of been a, a monumental game at this point and then at this point, and 
I would say right now uh, we're we're clicking on all cil cylinders, and so hopefully you know we can keep that going. And um, you know I don't I don't know how you stop that when when we're running the ball as well as we have been, and then we get the guys on the outside, and then we get our tight ends and, and slot guys involved as well. So. Uh, it, it's it's tough to stop. Are you finding more cohesion in the offensive line now that there's been more reps amongst the guys and with, you know, with, with injuries and things that you said? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think uh, not only as far as them playing more, but uh, they're getting more game experience, as you mentioned. You know, So even if we do switch a few guys in and out, um, they have game experience there. And so uh, even if they haven't played next to one another, um, they, they've been in studying like that before. So that's been really helpful. You, you, talked, you talked a little bit about it when, when Jay was asking you about reactions and whatnot. But the last couple of weeks, I mean, you've been garnering these Player of the Week honors and doing, doing a lot more television and things like that. How do you personally view that type of stuff? How, how do you handle that personally? Yeah, well, uh, look, I realized that I couldn't do what I, I do without the guys around me. So uh, that, that credit goes to, a lot of it goes to our old line, the guys outside fighting to get open and making plays on the ball. So um, I realized that and, and I recognize that. So um, with that being said, it, it's, it's an honor. I, it's a privilege and, uh, you know, it's fun to be recognized for all those things, but realize that uh, I, can't, I can't do it on my own. If there's a knock against the offense, it's that it hasn't been consistent for a whole game. You, will you need that to beat Wisconsin? Do you think is that something you guys are talking about? Yeah, I think so. Um, I, it's going to take everything we have to beat these guys, and uh, you know we made a push to score in every quarter uh, against Boise State, which we did. And uh, hopefully, our mindset is that we can continue to build off of that. And um, you know, when, every time we get in the red zone, red zone, we're we're scoring touchdowns rather than resorting to to field goals. As far as tempo goes, you've had a couple of games, maybe not Houston, but the others, where you've gotten a lead and then maybe gotten a little conservative with the play calling. Do you slow the tempo down when the play calling gets a little more conservative, or do you guys keep going at the same pace? Uh, well, uh, the coaches want us to continue at the same pace, um, but whether or not that, that happens, I, I'm not sure. Um, but that, that's that's what we're trying to accomplish. When when the play calling gets conservative, is it harder to maintain that same pace because maybe you're not having the same type of success or, or moving it in the same types of chunks? Well, well, yeah, it is. I mean, if, if we uh, if we aren't getting first downs, then we can't continue to push the tempo, and um, then, then we're having three and outs and and everything else, and we can't have that. So, um, if we're not on the field, we can't continue to push the tempo. So. Um, that's what really, uh, when, when our offense gets in a rhythm, is when we can continue to get first, uh, get first downs consecutively. Is that conservative play calling? Is that something you've talked with Coach and I about, or anything? Is that something you guys have discussed when to pull it off, or is that just his uh, decision? No, no, I haven't. You know, Coach and I, as you'll see, I respect what he does, and um, he gets a call, and, and I run it. Bronco said you're doing the crowd noise, pumping in noise, and practice, and that. Does that really help to? Uh, get you ready for a crowd like you see at Camp Randall? Um, you know, it, it's going to be hard to mimic any sort of environment like that, but uh, it, it gives us an idea. And we've been in hostile environments as well before, and, um, you know, we play at Utah State this uh, this year, and, you know, there's not going to be as many people at, at uh, Utah State as there will be at Wisconsin, but, uh, you know, those guys don't like us. So uh, it was a hostile environment, and, um, you know, we've been in situations, and we'll continue to, to do those things, and, and we'll be okay. Do you, do you even allow yourself to think about what a win this Saturday at Wisconsin would do for you guys, big picture, when, when you're looking at postseason type stuff? Or can you not look at it? You just have to look at it as a game, and that's it. Let the other stuff play out. Uh, I, I think about it a little bit, but um, the things that I worry about are the things that, that we can control, and uh, that's how hard we're preparing, how hard we're working right now. And I know that if we if we prepare hard and, and we get uh, ourselves ready to play, there's a great opportunity for us to go uh, beat a beat a great football team. Last question.